In the world of graphics cards, there has been some pretty wild news that has come out recently. And that is the most popular selling GPU right now, the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte, is apparently going to be discontinued sometime very soon. And now since this is not just the most popular selling GPU, but also it's the most popular used GPU, in at least when we reference the Steam survey charts, this leaves us the question of, well, how good is this GPU compared to the next generation RTX 4060, but also if we look at some good used options out there like the GTX 1080 Ti 11 gigabyte, what are you gonna be able to buy when this GPU gets discontinued? And should you buy it off the used market? What are the pros and cons? Let's discuss all that right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and let's get into the gaming benchmarks where today we're using an ASRock Pro RS motherboard 7800X3D as well as some 6000 megahertz memory which we've bumped up to 6200. This is some G-Skill low latency CL28 memory and this is going to basically give us the best performance for these GPUs so there's no bottlenecks but let's look at the first game here. We've got Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. And we've got both 1080p and 1440p benchmarks for you. And looking at the 1080p numbers here, see the RTX 4060 is doing pretty well versus the 3060 versus the 1080 Ti. But then the 6700 XT is definitely getting the victory in this series of benchmarks. Now, the 6700 XT is also coming right around the same price point as the 3060 and the 4060. And it does also carry the same amount of VRAM at 12 gigabytes, just like the 3060. And then moving up to 1440p though, we do see that 1080 Ti, this used bargain that in my opinion, it's sort of coming back into meta this card, I picked mine up personally for around $120 off the local used market. This card is giving out some very good performance, especially for the dollar off the used market. Now moving on to Robocop, it's kind of a similar story to the 1080p and 1440p numbers we saw in Rainbow Six Siege. The RTX 4060, I think, does a little bit better as opposed to it at 1440p, where it does start to fall behind a little bit. And then the 1080 Ti and 3060 start to catch up just a little bit more. But then moving on to a game like Baldur's Gate 3, here's where surprisingly the 1080 Ti comes very close to the 4060, beats out the 3060, and then the 6700 XT just is roaring ahead here in this particular title. Now, keep in mind, I am running a very strenuous benchmark here, but this is sort of like one of the worst case scenarios that can happen in this game. And then also at 1440p, we do see the 1080 Ti doing very well at this resolution here too. But then the next title here is more of an older title. This is Total War Warhammer. And here's where at both 1080p and 1440p, but we'll start off with the 1080p benchmarks first. Here is where the 4060 takes an L versus these other three cards in the benchmark charts. And the 1080 Ti actually does pretty impressive here. The 6700 XT does come out on top and moving up to 1440p, it's a similar trend, but the 1080 Ti with its bigger bandwidth on the memory does start to pull, I guess, a little bit more ahead as compared to the 1080p numbers, but it's still good to see that that old and gold used GPU, especially when you get it for the right price, is doing very well in these older titles. But moving on now to Fortnite, and here is where this game is just constantly getting updated. It's got new modes. And the, for some reason, the 0.1% lows just still absolutely suck across all the cards at both 1080p and 1440p in this game. But we got here the 4060 scoring a win at 1080p, but then stepping up to 1440p, the results do change quite a bit where that bandwidth on the 4060 does start to feel the itch a little bit, so to speak, and the performance is dropping down. So the 6700 XT does take the win at the higher resolution here. But also the 1080 Ti, I mean, giving out very good numbers, just same with the 3060. So if you're looking to just play games, all four of these cards in today's charts is definitely going to give you a great experience. Though the final benchmark we're going to pull up for you guys here is the power consumption numbers. This would be, especially out of the box, the Achilles heel for the GTX 1080 Ti, and it would be the shining star for the RTX 4060. We can see a massive discrepancy here 
just straight out of the box. That's if you're going to do nothing, you're not going to bother tuning these GPUs, then you will see a massive amount of power savings, as well as heat being dumped in your case and the need for a, I guess, a lower wattage rated power supply. All these things matter. And so here's where the 4060 is kind of shining outside of the benchmarks with those benefits that can be realized. But there is another benchmark I'm going to show you guys. Just hold it right there because here is where you can undervolt all four of these cards. But in particular, the GTX 1080 Ti does extremely well here with an undervolt. It is just a night and day difference for this card in terms of power savings, coming even then close to that of the RX 6700 XT, which really shocked me when I saw the undervolt and how well it is on the older 10 series cards, and then how good it is still on the RX 6700 XT, the RTX 3060, they still benefit from the undervolt, but then the 4060 doesn't benefit a whole lot, but that's because its power consumption is already relatively low. And because it's got that smaller silicon as well as having smaller transistors being optimized for efficiency, it's going to have less variance in power. And so you are actually not gonna see as much of a difference when you undervolt this card, especially compared to the big, but not so bad GTX 1080 Ti. The wrapping up these benchmarks shows us one thing that's very clear. All four of these cards are in a very similar league in terms of performance. And I'm just really surprised to see that the GTX 1080 Ti is still kicking along so hard. Seven years after it's been launched, I think it's seven years it's been since this card's been launched. Absolutely phenomenal card when it was launched. Still a phenomenal card to this day, especially the price tag attached to it. Though, when you are looking for a 1080 Ti, and I do this in my used PC parts hunts, I'll put the link to the most recent one up here where I did snatch this 1080 Ti up. I would recommend um, just asking the seller, especially if you're buying it off on, online, how much uh, headroom does that card have? And so that just basically means when you put it through a standard benchmark like Unigine Heaven, you're just raising that clock slider and you're raising the memory speeds as well. And if it just crashes straight away after a little bump, that means this the card's probably degraded a little bit over its life. It's had some really heavy usage or it's had, of course, the other uh, scenario, it's just had poor usage environment where say the case has had really poor airflow, the ambients are really hot inside the case. But for me personally, I've actually found with cards like the 1080 Ti, the owners who had them took really good care of them because they were a flagship card when they were released and they had really good environments that they were living inside, so to speak. And so I've actually haven't come into, I don't think I've come into a faulty 1080 Ti that's been advertised as being good, put it that way. Also with the new pricing of the 4060, 3060 and 6700 XT all coming in at similar, just under $300 levels, the used market for these cards is also offering quite a bit of a bargain. I mean, even on eBay, you can pick these cards up, all three of them, for a little over $200. That seems to be the going rate. This RTX 4060 in today's comparison, I believe I picked this up for a shade under 200 USD. So it makes for a very good pick if you can get one. You can definitely always shave off a few bucks when it comes to the used market. Though, of course, the final thing to talk about here with these GPUs is the other technologies involved. I know people would complain if I didn't talk about it, but there's a reason I pulled it back a little bit later in the video this time, because when I was testing the 1080 Ti, I was actually using in-game upscaling, right? So we're talking about the upscaling now, DLSS2, that comes with the 3060, the 4060, it's great, don't get me wrong, but also in a game like Robocop, when I started testing this out, we've now got technologies like FSR3, as well as the TSR in-game. So if you don't have access to DLSS2 or 3 in the case of the 4060 having that exclusively, then the 1080 Ti can take advantage of TSR upscaling, which I thought was really good. It's gonna give you that 1440p image, but still it's being upscaled from a lower image and it still looks really good even compared to DLSS2. A lot of games that are coming out now, especially the most popular games, they do have these sort of other options that can get you a pretty good experience that's close to that of DLSS 2 and 3. So it is good to see that those options are coming out and they just make older cards like the 1080 Ti much more useful and relevant, even though they are big selling points in the case of DLSS 2 and 3 for RTX uh, 4060 and then DLSS 2 in the case of the RTX 3060. But it's nothing to, I think, influence your purchasing decision a whole lot as opposed to just getting a raw deal on the used market. And so although it's a benefit to the RTX cards, I just don't think it should be the only thing you look at 
And I definitely think you should just be looking at the price first, as well as what situation you're in. Do you have access to the used market? Can you get a good deal there? And in that case, I'm looking at all four of these cards constantly on the used market for the best prices. And so my personal recommendation coming out of today's video is going to be get whatever card is the best price, both new and used, get that best deal as always. But I think there's also one more final talking point. That's the eight gigabytes of VRAM versus the 12 on the other two cards and the 11 on the 1080 Ti. And this comes down to what settings do you play at? If you play at ultra settings and that's all you wanna play at and you wanna play the latest titles, then I would say get yourself the extra VRAM and just sort of in ways future-proof yourself a little bit. But keep in mind on that same token, when you do go with ultra or epic settings in a lot of games, the FPS is just so bad in general that a lot of the times the VRAM isn't going to make a huge difference. And I found personally from my own gaming experiences that eight gigabytes, at least with the 4060, is plenty enough when we look at all the titles that we tested here, I came into zero VRAM issues. And that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make the best decision for you. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But do let us know in the comment section below, which of these cards are you looking out for personally? Would you buy used? Would you buy new? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.